I'm delighted to welcome you to our Pompeii exhibition um, opening today. Here we have just one of the examples of the many examples of the well-preserved pieces that have come from Pompeii. This Roman city was buried by a devastating volcanic eruption in AD 79, so two, almost um, 2,000 years ago. And as a result, we have these treasures that were frozen in time and many aspects of daily life also um, being revealed to us, lying unexcavated under meters of ash until the mid 18th century when excavation started to reveal this huge city. This is one of the, an upper class youth um, made in marble, an expensive material, finely carved. We can tell that he's a youth still, he hasn't yet reached maturity by the ornament he wears around his neck. This is called a bulla. A bulla was essentially a pouch that held a lucky charm and it was worn by citizen children to protect them during their growing years. They took it off when they reached maturity, when they reached adulthood. What we're really lucky to have here is not just the bulla on the statue itself, but an original gold bulla that has survived and it's one of the amazing artifacts that has survived because it was buried for such a long time, for 2,000 years, under the ash, undetected. Usually these pieces would have been melted down for their, their value because it's made of gold rather than being preserved. But we in Pompeii are able to find artifacts like this that give us a sense of the people who were destroyed by this eruption. Roman society and the society that has survived to us from the city of Pompeii was a very uh, socially structured society with wealthy people, wealthy citizens, having obligations to the rest of their city to provide um, things like entertainment, public buildings, they had to build public buildings, and even to um, run for political offices. What we have here is a fresco, which is a wall painting, surviving from a, a, a private house that shows some, a scene that has been labeled the distribution of bread. There is a man wearing a white toga who is handing out loaves of bread to a number of other um, citizens or uh, people not wearing togas. One of the things about Pompeii is it's, it preserves a lot of treasures, a lot of artifacts, but it also preserves the houses themselves. And here we are inside the house of a Roman citizen. We're in the private life section where we're actually in the heart of the house, the enclosed garden area. The rooms of a Pompeian house would be distributed around the garden, so the garden was a p pillared courtyard. And this was a place where, as well as rest and relaxation and growing plants happened, this was also a place to show off artworks. And your more cultured and wealthy Pompeians had a number of artworks decorating their garden. What we have on the wall here is a fresco, a wall painting, of a garden scene. This type of fresco actually was on the wall of a garden and its durable technique, it was painted onto wet plaster so the paint actually bonded with the plaster which makes it a lot more durable than just painting onto a wall. But the durable technique means that it has survived over the centuries in beautiful detail. What we're seeing is an imaginary garden um, with plants, a trellis work fence, peacocks, a dove, and a piece of sculpture. This plaque is a piece of sculpture standing in the garden. But the point of painting this on a garden wall was it would be making your garden exp um, extend, appear to extend into the distance. All around us, we have pieces of sculpture that would stand amongst the plants in the garden, um, decorating a wealthy man's house. Here we have some of the beautiful garden sculpture, including one of my personal favorites. This is a statue of a young girl. It's actually a muse. So the muses were the religious inspiration for poetry, drama, music. This is the muse Polyhymnia, many hymns, the inspiration for religious um, poetry. 
and she is standing, staring off into space, um, lost in thought. She is actually a Roman copy of a Greek model that was being made um, in the Hellenistic period about 300 years before this piece decorated somebody's garden. We have many copies surviving and it just shows how much the Romans appreciated the early Greek civilization, copied their artworks, read their literature and idealized their lifestyle. Here we have one of the star pieces of this exhibition. It's a, a life-sized statue of a young girl made in bronze. And this particular piece demonstrates in the best way possible the amazing treasures that have survived in Pompeii and would not have survived elsewhere if it hadn't been for the eruption that buried the city, this piece would not have survived today. It's made of bronze. Bronze is a valuable uh, material that would be melted down and reused over the centuries. But because this piece was buried under meters of ash, it did not get melted down. This is a Roman uh, recreation of a Greek style of statue and she actually has five sisters who were, she is one of five sisters who were all found around a rich person's uh, decorative pool in their garden from the neighboring town of Herculaneum, which was another town that was also buried by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. What you'll see in the background is the eruption of Mount Vesuvius taking place, recreated, to show exactly the type of thing that was happening to bury artifacts like this and preserve them for us to see almost 2,000 years later. In this final section of the exhibition, which we call the human toll, we get to see some of the victims of the eruption of um, Pompeii, the, of, of Mount Vesuvius, that has preserved Pompeii and all the treasures that you see in the rest of the exhibition. These are casts of the actual people who died during the eruption. We don't, in this museum, have the original casts that were made at the point of excavation. Those casts stay in Pompeii at the site and they actually contain the skeletons of the unfortunate victims. What we have here are copies of those casts that have been uh, sent out to travel around the world and spread the story of this huge tragedy, but this hu amazing uh, preservation of artifacts for future generations.